Hey guys, Infinity here. And I am putting together this little video about, um, it's really about incarnates, but this video that is on the back end of this one here is about star seeds and it's actually found on the Gaia network. I don't even know if it's in their playlist. It's just on this one block. It's really this kind of obscure video that I wanted to share with you guys. And I'm going to put the link to the article um, and where you can find the original to the video um, in the description. But one thing I wanted to say here is that um, this, these descriptions, um, uh, these 20, it's actually the article is 27 things. It says, this is what it says here. It says, are you a star seed? The 27 star seed characteristics that might give you an answer. And a lot of these characteristics, uh, actually can really be, um, attributed to both elementals, star seeds slash galactics, and um, angelics as well. So, and just kind of empaths, a lot of empaths, uh, you, you know, are going to be like find this crossover thing happening. So, I wanted to make it really clear that if you're an incarnate um, and you've and, and you could also be um an actual not a star seed not an elemental not a an angelic you could be an actual original human but an older soul human like incarnated as a human over and over again um, many, many, many times. So you're an old soul human. So that is possible as well to have the, to not feel like, I don't really feel like I am connected to anything other than, than just here. And I don't feel, um, more than just old soul and I'm connected to like all sorts of things. So people can kind of feel like that too. But what's important to understand here is that either you're an old soul, um, or you're an old soul, you're, you're a human old soul, or you are an incarnate and you're an incarnate star seed, angelic or elemental. And an elemental can be um, that kind of encompasses the fey realm and the elementals. So it could be a um, any any type of of being of the fey realm as well. And for angelics, that would also include dragons. Although something to to note is that there are not that many dragons compared to angels and then there's even fewer archangels incarnate there's not there's not all that many archangels incarnate um there's more angels and and then there's uh and then there's just a few also dragons um close in number to archangels and uh you can read about a lot of this stuff in the different incarnates in a the only book that i know of that goes over all of these different um things and not even it, i don't even think it, it no it doesn't go over archangels and it doesn't go over dragons but it does go over earth angels so angels and then also as angelics angels and archangels what we what is different about us compared to let's say an elemental or a galactic or a star seed um is that as angelics we 
have incarnated on all the different possible um, planets that have life and that that like has any kind of any kind of life we are we are there so depending on the on the situation like some planets are still in their very early developmental stages and they don't have complex life going on and then some do so depending on how busy a planet may be depends on our attention to it and um we would have gone to the different planets um especially like if we're if i'm incarnated here i will have gone to all of the different especially as, as an archangel definitely gone to and been at as an incarnate myself on the different planets of the different star seeds that are here so that that's an absolute um given so as angelics we can also feel like at first like, oh, I'm starseed, if you read about starseed stuff, because, well, technically, yeah, but that's not exactly it either. You're not, you're not just a starseed. It goes beyond that if you're, if you're an angelic incarnate. Um, so a lot of angelics will be confused and think, oh, I'm a starseed, and that's not totally it. And they're just missing that you can be an, an angel incarnate. And there's archangels that can be incarnate too, like me. And, and so this is just, these are just things that I wanted to touch on. I wanted to go over uh, before, you know, playing this this other part of the video just because a, a lot of people are confused you know there's there's a lot of these characteristics that can very much um cross over with angels and cross over with fae and cross over um in just you know different ways and so and you can like if you're an angel you can you've been a star seed too you have also been on different planets and as an angel maybe this is um your maybe this is not your home base planet so that is a possibility too because as angelics we kind of have or as as angels angels have their different places that they that they would go to and be at and then they'll go to different places and and you know it's just a kind of a, a thing where some have gone and been at, at other in other systems on other planets and other types of bodies and living different types of lives on different types of planets and 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 have done that and really wanted to be there and then decided to come here because this was an important mission and they wanted to be a part of this and so this could be one of their newer missions here too the same can go for for star for star seeds and so there is a lot of crossover here you guys so i just wanted to put that out there to make it known because um I think people can kind of swing around like, oh, am I this? Am I that? I should, I need to figure out what I am. And then they'll read different things and hear different things and get different information and experience all sorts of different things and be confused. And one of the things that's really important is to figure out what you are like or where you've been and what you're, what you are on a soul base level and, and all that good stuff and and so it is important to um 
not or to be aware that for some people there's a lot of crossover there okay so there you go if you guys have any questions about this stuff please reach out you can leave comments you can always send me a direct message um in instagram uh if you have questions in general like general questions or questions about me or or what i do or scheduling or any of that stuff if you have like psychic questions or you want psychic advice or you know are these people soulmates am i you know afflicted with some negative energy things like this that those are questions that that are different than um than than that we then just you know something that we would dm about i guess you could say um and for a lot of that that would be actually booking time with me but for general questions uh again if you have questions about me or whatever um just send me a dm in instagram i'm at infinite love light energy just like here on my youtube channel uh and my website the same thing infinite love light energy all right guys i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day thanks for watching this video about incarnates and again be sure to read the description to see the link to <coughs> excuse me the <coughs> excuse me the article on the Gaia.com website and um, and then you know just let it sit with you for a while and see how you feel about this stuff and um, oh the book yes the book that I was um, referring to is I kind of got sidetracked there it's called um, earth angel realms and it's by doreen Vir virtue and i will put the link to that book in the description as well and that goes over a lot of different incarnations that you could have been and when you read this book you'll be like oh this is definitely me oh this is definitely not me oh this is definitely me and and you can have multiples so and depending on your um uh your soul type or your soul spark so if you're a true star, uh, star seed let's say um you're pleiadian and you've you could have incarnated in in other different different star systems as well as here on gaia but you wouldn't have incarnated as a as a fae you would have incarnated as a human um because that's the dense that's 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 the that's how that works you're not gonna a star seed is not gonna incarnate into a into a fae but an angelic could so and then um uh but then a fae would incarnate into a human as well um, so you could be a mermaid and incarnate into a human and, but not be a mermaid and incarnate into a star seed. It doesn't work like that either. So it really kind of depends the way it's going to, you know, cross this way and that way. I guess what you can understand is, um, that star seeds can be other from different systems as different star seeds as well as humans but they're not going to be fey and they're not going to be angelics um and fey can be humans um and they could also have been angelics but they're not going to be star seeds so uh, i think that kind of covers that and uh and same thing with dragons. Dragons are of the angelic realm. So dragons would it could be um could in, would incarnate as basically human. Dragons are not going to incarnate as 
um, to be other star seeds and they're not going to be other other thing or the dragons are interesting because they cross over um and that's why they were created because they can cross over the different realms or work with the different elements and be of water of air of earth and of spirit and also cross into the fey realm um and so um they they're either if if it's a dragon they're pretty much either a dragon or they've incarnated as a human um so they're not going to identify as a star seed they're not going to identify as a as a mer person or a gnome um they are either incarnated as a human for a very specific reason and it's because um, dragons we like there's once kind of things move along here we're going to have these like pockets these like soul groups these family soul groups where there's going to be um like let's say like me as an archangel and there'll be one or two dragons and then um several other angels and then other incarnates as well but the way it's supposed to be is that because because there's always like basically an archangel archangels and dragons are always together and so um that's just kind of how this is kind of how it is it's just um the way that in like the spirit form i mean and so when it comes to being incarnate we're really connected and but there's not that many dragons because they don't really fit in with a whole lot of people um dragons are very intelligent very intense very much loners they're very idealistic have tremendous sense of loyalty dedication um their fiery personalities um very affectionate um uh what else um very inquisitive uh dedicated and um They're very fiercely competitive and uh, their warrior protective spirit is really, really usually pretty intense. And typically they incarnate um, as males or much more strong dominant females those would be dragons um and again they are uh, they are angelic and they will uh, be very much into nature's elements minerals rocks crystals water fire air flying um they like heights they like adventures they're very creative um i guess i'm talking about a lot about dragons here for a reason so if anybody relates um and what else here uh they can have some pretty intense health issues because they tend to take on a lot of um negative they tend to transmute their natural healers and tend to transmute a lot of energy so or take in a lot of energy maybe they're not they don't know to transmute yet so they can have issues with um headaches bowel problems um overall achiness um
social anxiety just to the point of just not wanting to be around very many people um, or doing that in small doses like or really partying it up here and there but not often um, that sort of thing um, and they tend to be uh, And mostly the age group between, like, 35 to 55. And then there was, a, 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 a like, a gap in, in dragon incarnations. Um, and then we have a few children that are also dragons that are incarnated um for like the second wave but uh there really there aren't many dragons that are that are younger than 30 but than, than about 35 and again they're mostly male and again not a whole lot of them there's way more star seeds way more an angels and there's just, there's more dragons than archangels, but, and there's not that many archangels. There's, um, I would say, archangels incarnate at this time, I don't think there's more than 200 incarnate right now. And that, I think, is, that's not awake incarnate that's just the possibility of integration but they're not awake they are um there's a possibility of it but there's only a very small handful that's actually awake less than 25 so um yeah there you go and for those um archangels they are um they don't have i guess you could say the worldly missions um they have different types of missions as archangels not all all archangels are meant to be on youtube and you know <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I'm, I'm Archangel Gabriel. Not everybody's meant to have the mission to be out there for, for the, you know, public consumption and to deal with society. A lot of Archangels are here for much more, um, I guess you could say, quieter missions, but still extraordinarily important, of course. And to work on, you know, smaller scale um, and um, at some point they are, it's going to be more of a, a known thing. But even then, it's not going to be like all of the archangels are gonna have YouTube channels either, you know, um, even if they do come out and go public about who they are, um, or they work more privately, because there's going to be a lot of archangels that are much more private, um, that's the, the way that their, their mission is designed, so, <laughs> Um, so anyway, there's that. If you guys have any questions, again, please let me know. Thanks for sticking around. Um, and take a look at this video coming up. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day or evening. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget, the key is to create. And I love you already. Bye, guys. We've all found ourselves gazing at the stars mesmerized by our galaxy, wondering what lies beyond. But for about 1% of Earth's population, this feeling goes far beyond a sense of wonder. This group feels a homesickness, 
an intense desire to be out there where they belong, their true home. For these individuals, the earth and its inhabitants have always felt foreign, as if they don't belong here. And no matter where they are, they feel a longing to be home among the stars. These beings, known as starseed incarnations, have made the conscious decision to incarnate as humans on Earth. Originating from a star system outside our own, they have volunteered to bring with them the light and knowledge that will uplift the human race to higher levels of consciousness. Most starseeds are typically left in a state of amnesia, spending their entire existence on Earth without knowing the origin of their souls. They've forgotten their home and their mission, but once awakened, they see clearly who they are and what they must do. If you are a starseed, chances are that you felt a strong flash of recognition or knowing that this could be true for you. Once you acknowledge your origins and your mission, you can find true satisfaction from life here on Earth. Some other indications that you could be starseed are, from childhood, you possessed an inherent wisdom that typically doesn't come until later in life. You never felt that you were like your family. You didn't feel the same sense of belonging that your peers had with their families. You are very intuitive and can see easily beyond people's facades. You rejected forms of organized religion and started to live by your own. You're drawn to metaphysics and seeking answers to the unknown. You find monetary and societal systems to be strange or nonsensical. You have a strong desire for a more peaceful and harmonious earth and a strong aversion to war, conflict, and violence. You create fantasy in your head and can be drawn to forms of escapism, including substance abuse. You have exceptional dreams, but difficulty sleeping. Babies and animals are drawn to or mesmerized by you. You're highly sensitive to pain, harsh light, clamorous noise, and you often become frustrated with the limitations of your physical body. Some starseeds have multiple origins, incarnating on different worlds for extended periods of time, while others who are new to Earth may feel the strongest desire to return home, as they are experiencing the anxiety of their first incarnation and often have a sensitivity to the harsh Earth energies, which are unlike those from their dimension. Each world, universe, or star system has their own energies, which become part of the souls that inhabit it, allowing starseeds to be recognized by the energy they emit. Once a starseed awakens to their true origins, they typically gravitate to other starseeds that they can relate to. Determining your starseed origins only requires examining your own energies to see what type you align with. Keep in mind that many starseeds have several origins, and getting a past life regression may give you a more in-depth look to exactly where you came from and what your mission is. There are hundreds of starseed types, but the following examples will give you an idea of some of the most common incarnations here on Earth. First, we have the Arcturians, who come from the Arcturus star system, which is located in the constellation of Buotis. Arcturus is the brightest star in the northern celestial hemisphere. Arcturians are a highly evolved race and are known as master healers. They have telepathic abilities and a proclivity for communication and transmission of information. They often transmit information through sound, color, or geometry. Their communication abilities make them excellent keepers of peace, and they embody the frequencies associated with the throat chakra. They appear strong, capable, and powerful. They have a lot of physical and mental energy, and do not enjoy sitting still. Our next star seeds come from the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. The Pleiades cluster is located in the constellation of Taurus. It is the most obvious star cluster in the night sky that is visible to the naked eye. Pleiadians have a deep desire for peace and happiness for all, and they emit a pleasant energy that is enjoyable to be around. They are highly sensitive and loving, and often sacrifice their needs for the needs of others. These nurturing and empathic beings tend to repress emotions, and are prone to crying when these feelings have been built up. They can even become physically ill in situations of anger or confrontation. Pleiadians are especially radiant as they communicate through light transfer and appear to have a natural glow. Syrian starseeds come from the Sirius star system, located in the constellation Canis Major. It contains the brightest star that is visible anywhere from Earth in the night sky. Beings with Sirius origins are focused on the future and don't like to concern themselves with the past. They tend to live simply and are not complicated people, but are spiritually deep. They see themselves as helpers, workers, and doers, and are often focused and determined. 
They are open-minded, but they know their own truth. They are calm and slow to anger. Vegan star seeds have origins in the Lyra constellation near Vega, the second brightest star in the northern celestial hemisphere. Vegans tend to be proud, strong-willed, and independent. They are very sensitive to energy and possess healing abilities. They may have an affinity to crystals and stones. They have a variety of talents, abilities, and interests in both creative and intellectual fields. But because of this, they can find it difficult to fully devote themselves to one discipline. They also feel a great responsibility to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. Discovering that you are a starseed and learning about your origin is only the first step to fulfilling your soul's purpose. It's important to remember that having origins from a different star system does not mean that you can't have a meaningful and satisfying existence here on Earth. Your soul volunteered to incarnate here, to live amongst Earth humans, to teach and help them. You came to share your gifts and abilities, but also to experience the unique beauty of this planet we call Earth.